Hi, this is Bill, and you are on Finest Travel Beat with Angela and Bill. Today we continue our British Isles series on the Regal Princess with a port call in St. Peter Port on the Channel Island of Guernsey. We can tell you a little bit about Guernsey, show you around some Nazi fortifications from World War II, take a visit to the little chapel, and walk around the village. We're going to tell you everything you need to know to make your port visit to Guernsey a special and memorable one. Hello again, everybody, and thank you for watching. We really appreciate all the positive feedback we've gotten. St. Peter Port, which is the port call we had on this cruise, is located on Guernsey. Guernsey is one of the Channel Islands located very close to the coast of France. It's a small island, about 24 square miles, and has a population of about 64,000. Now, to get to Guernsey, the ships cannot dock in the port, so they dock off of the coast, which is why they call it a tender port or a water shuttle port. So you have to get off the ship and get onto a lifeboat or a tender, and that takes you into the main port. Now, Guernsey is very often skipped because of the rough waters of the English Channel. So bear that in mind, and I'll give you some tips on some things to do to protect yourself in case the port gets skipped. Guernsey is definitely a very different island than any we have been to. It uh, it does get very windy there. It's in the English Channel. And again, that's why the port has skipped quite a bit. There is a heavily French influence on the island. You'll see that as we uh, show you some footage from around the town and from driving around. But it is a uh, part of Great Britain. Today we chose Venture Ashore as a supplier for our shore excursion. We On this trip, we tried several different vendors and suppliers. Uh, one, to save some money if we could. Two, get better itineraries we're looking for that are more available. And three, and most importantly, so that we could sample the shore excursions for our travel clients. For picking up our shuttle, we walked around the town a little bit. You can see there is the Albion House Bar, which happens to be right next to a church within uh, an arm's length, believe it or not. A tour began right near the port. The bus was there on time. There was a little bit of confusion as to where the bus was located. Um, could have been a little bit of signage by the tour operator, in our opinion. And the van was, was pretty small. Now, I understand why, because the roads, as you'll see in some of the videos, are very, very narrow. The other issue we had with Guernsey is that because the roads are so narrow, there was some construction going on, there was a lot of traffic, the tour was kind of, while we enjoyed it, we, we did uh, rearrange some stops, the, we did not make it to the Guernsey Pearl, I don't know that that was a bad thing, because that was, looked like it was pretty crowded. But the itinerary was different than the one that was initially provided. And also, uh, well, I'll explain at the end uh, some of the other uh, minor things that annoyed us about the, the tour in general. Throughout the video, you'll see the French influence on the architecture. And even the road names are uh, rue rather than street in some cases. Um, our first stop was at we a uh, scenic overlook that was pretty close to the port. Unfortunately, as you can see, there was a heavy fog that day, which is very common and very typical of the English Channel. Uh, really couldn't see much. They say it's on a clear day. You can actually see the coast of France from here. But again, as you can see, uh, it was probably a little bit early. The fog had not lifted yet. Might have been better to have seen this a little bit later in the day. But of course, as we all know, nobody can control the weather. As we view this, another one of the things that we did not do, which is fairly close to St. Petersport, is to visit the home of Victor Hugo, where he lived in exile for 15 years and wrote some of his most famous works while staying in Guernsey. 
My apologies for the glare on the glass. Obviously, when you're taking a bus, that's a bit of a challenge when uh, taking video photographs. If any of my fellow YouTubers out there have a tip or a trick on how to avoid that, I would greatly appreciate that information. Continuing through the countryside, we did pass the Guernsey Airport. They have one airport on the island that provides service to England and the rest of the continent. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video, but Guernsey is definitely, you could tell it was an affluent island. Our next stop was the Little Chapel, which we absolutely adored. We weren't sure what to expect when we booked it, but basically the Little Chapel was built, uh, the first version of it was built in 1914. It was torn down and reconstructed a couple of times. Uh, it's about 19 feet by 7 feet, I believe. It's a tiny church built up on the side of a hillside, and it's covered with broken pieces of pottery in a mosaic pattern. Pictures don't do it justice, and I'm not sure that the video does either, but this was just absolutely fascinating. Uh, it is very narrow walking through there. Um, if the, you can see Angela, who is not a tall person by any stretch of the imagination, is going in there. There's not a lot of room. In fact, legend has it that when it was first built, a uh, bishop came to uh, bless it, and he couldn't fit through the front door, so they actually had to tear it down and rebuild it. It's just really something very fascinating to see in person. It's very tiny, so it would be best to do this without a large bus tour, because I could see it definitely backing up. We had a small group, and uh, it, w it was fine, but we still didn't spend a whole lot of time, because there's no room for more than one person walking through at a time. You can see the stained glass work and just all the pottery, little altar there. Um, again, this is all pieces of broken porcelain that have been made into a mosaic pattern. The colors were amazing. Just, I don't know, again, I don't know if the pictures are doing this, the video is doing it justice. It really isn't as I'm watching it, but it was just a really, really neat, experience and I highly recommend it if you go into Guernsey this is definitely one of those must do things I don't want to edit this out because I really want you to see the full uh, full walkthrough for those that cannot make it to Guernsey or their port is skipped for some reason it, it's definitely worth seeing so um, while we're doing that uh, if you're enjoying this video please hit that like button it helps us out Leave some comments below if you like the style that we're doing. Um, if you like this voiceover style, that the feedback really helps me make better videos in the future. And if you want to see the rest of the videos in the series or videos on all of the other cruises that we go on and all-inclusive resorts, um, it makes Angela there very happy. Hit that subscribe button, please. It, again, it really helps the channel out and lets f YouTube know that they should be showing our videos to more people. I mentioned a little bit more about the tour that we used. Venture Ashore, again, was the tour operator we used. One knock that we had is we got off the bus and we were told, pointed to walk in this direction, but we weren't given any direction as far as what time we had to be back on the bus. So we kind of got back there a little bit earlier, and some people didn't. There was a little gift shop and a clock shop, and there you can see the famous Guernsey Cows. Guernsey is very famous for their cows and for supposedly having fantastic ice cream, although we couldn't find authentic Guernsey ice cream anywhere. After leaving the Little Chapel area and seeing the Guernsey cows, we next drove out to what was the highlight for this excursion for me and for visiting Guernsey and St. Petersport which was the Nazi-slash-German uh, fortifications from World War II. Now, Guernsey was occupied during World War II by the Germans for about five years, and they built an extensive network of fortifications, forts, artillery batteries ringing around the island. In fact, Guernsey is the only... Uh, 
part of England that was actually occupied during World War II. Even though it is very close to the coast of France, it is, was and it still is part of Great Britain. One great thing that our tour operator did was take us into an area that was a little less busy than others. There you can see one of the artillery pieces that uh, was left over, and there I am coming out of one of the entrenchments. The entrenchments and the foxholes are uh, of varying safety, and some are open, some are closed. There we can see a uh, uh, another piece of artillery, uh, anti-aircraft gun, that somebody would actually go into. Uh, obviously, I didn't try to fit into that. But these entrenchments are all around the island and very, very interesting if you like history. After visiting and getting out of the bus at those fortifications, we drove around a lot of the coastline of the island. I don't have a whole lot of footage that I'm going to share just because the glare was pretty bad on the windows and we didn't get another opportunity to get off of the bus as we drove around. But as you can see through these videos, some nice beaches. The weather was really, really great for our entire trip. There was actually people out in the water, uh, probably a little chilly for this current Floridian's blood, but it was a uh, very nice scenery, very pleasant drive. The roads weren't as jammed along the coast. So we could, uh, we could really enjoy it. And as you can see from the, the footage that I have here, there are uh, German fortifications pretty much everywhere. So if you are on the island and doing it kind of on your own, uh, you can probably grab a taxi and just ask them to take you to some of them. And they are literally all over the coastline. Now, as we did not have the time we did not visit the Guernsey Pearl, which is a a gift shop. They sell pearls there. They also have a cafe and they have some museums and some views of the waterfront, which was a little disappointing. After returning back and being dropped off by the port, we decided to walk around a little bit. The shops were not your typical expected souvenir type shops that would be in a cruise port town there were a lot of high-end shops there were some restaurants but in general as you could see uh, a, a lot of very typical high-end stores as well as banks now we found out later on that guernsey is known for a place where you can do your banking without a whole lot of questions being asked if you know what we mean before I headed back to the ship, I had to stop for a pint. We went to the Albion House Tavern, which has been in this location since 1780. Now, that picture, I am touching both a church and a bar, which I'm pretty sure breaks some sort of a sin someplace, but I'm not really sure which one. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records as being the closest tavern to a church in the British Isles, which is kind of interesting. Uh, again, great beers they had there. The beer in England in general is served a little bit warmer than we used to in the United States. I had a pint of Liberation Ale. Uh, call back to the end of World War II when Guernsey was liberated, and it was very good. After that, we decided to head back to the ship. We noticed the line for the tenders was getting somewhat lengthy. That's one thing I'll point out is on tender ports, they can be lines for getting the tenders, especially coming back. We probably waited about a half an hour. They were playing some music, and you could get some some drinks and some snacks and stuff like that while you waited. They did use a larger boat. Um, I guess they contracted out, so we were able to fit more people on it and thus get us back a little bit quicker than we would have if they were just using the lifeboats to get us back and forth. In general, Guernsey is a really cute island. It's got a very nice harbor, lots of ships. Again, as you can tell, it's fairly affluent. And as I noted, there was a lot of banks. It looked like a lot of smaller ships, too, or boats that came in and out on a somewhat regular basis. That there is Castle Coronet, another one of the fortifications that uh, protects St. Peter's Port, which is the harbor. Uh, 
beautiful fortifications, very interesting island. Not a lot of people get to go there because it is skipped quite often as a tender port. Now, as I'm going to continue to do throughout this series and all the videos I do on shore excursions, because Guernsey is skipped so often, make sure whoever you are booking through has a refund guarantee or a rescheduling guarantee that if the ship misses the port for some reason, that you would be entitled to a refund. That's very important. So definitely make sure you read the terms and conditions of whoever you book your tours through. The downtown area of St. Peter's Port is very walkable. They also have like a little trolley train. I don't have footage of it. And uh, I don't know a whole lot about it. If you do, please put it in the comments. But that seemed to make some of the more regular stops in the area. I believe it stopped at Victor Hugo's house as well. And as you can see here, we're pulling back on, getting uh, off of the tender and back onto the ship. Also, if you're handicapped, take that in mind as well, because tenders very often are not very handicap accessible. Well, we're trying to keep these videos to 15 to 20 minutes, so that'll wrap it up. If you've been to Guernsey, let us know in the comments below what you did. And also, again, if you're getting value out of these videos, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. So, on behalf of Angela, thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you on our next adventure. Bye-bye, everybody.